My name is Taita. I'm writing the story of my life on scrolls as a lowly slave in the service of my irascible master, Lord Inte, Grand Vizier of Upper Egypt and a grand embezzler of our Pharaoh Mimosa's more than ample coffers. I have been summoned to Pharaoh's palace to read his future from the mazes of Amor. Ten mystical discs. My dynasty, will it survive? I could not tell him the truth of my visions, so in the interest of preserving his happiness and my life, I invented another more palatable story. Ophiramimus, ruler of the two lands, you and your dynasty shall indeed survive. I see a forest of trees, each one bearing the red and gold crowns of your two kingdoms. Will my line survive? Yes, great Egypt. I hear the cries of a newborn infant. Is it a son? It is, my lord. But I... But? I do not see how you can be the father when you have not taken a new bride, befitting your godliness. That is true. None of my 20 wives has produced me a son. You will find me a suitable bride who will guarantee me a son. Pharaoh's unspoken threat had not escaped me. These days in Thebes, a slave's life was about as important as a camel's carbuncle. In truth, I knew the ideal marital match for him. Alas, I loved her myself and would go to any lengths to keep her from the Pharaoh's gaze. Though my duties as a teacher took up much of every day, I never tired of them, for my heart always beat faster at the first glimpse of my mistress Lostris. I had composed many poems to her, reflecting her beauty and gentle nature. Taita, my drawings are so clumsy and ugly. I'll never learn. Don't be so impatient, my little lostress. The art of writing requires a lot of practice. Come, try again. Patience is a virtue seldom found in women. But never in a man. Look what you did. No, that's very good. Right. Very <laughs> good. Thank you. My pleasure. Now let's do it again. Hold the pen steady. That... Look what you made me do. Rasfa. Taita, come with me. Ah, why? What have I done? Titus done nothing wrong. I order you to release him. The order comes from your father, Lord in death. <laughs> Do you know why I summoned you here? No, my lord. Of what act am I accused? Your guards will testify that I was doing nothing that was not totally innocent. Instructing my daughter. You yourself empowered me with her education. That is true. It seems I should have been more prudent. This was found hidden. Among your things. The portrait of Lustrous, the verse of love. A slave who dares desire his master's daughter. My lord. My lord, I have never touched my young mistress nor led her to imagine that my feelings for her were anything more than those required of a teacher for his pupil. I would dearly like to believe you. The diversity of your talents and knowledge makes you not just a valued tutor, but a much prized slave. But in all truth, how can a father place his daughter's future in the hands of a slave who is still too young? Too full of obscene, carnal desire. I beg you, my lord, don't sell me. Lostris will never know of my feelings for her. Please, let me stand by her side and serve her humbly. 
Very well. Since you speak from your heart, my daughter shall keep her teacher. And I will sleep soundly, knowing that she is safe. Thank you. Entrusted in the care of a eunuch. No. We must protect you from any further temptations. Say goodbye to them, slave. At the day of your burial, they can be placed in your tomb. And if the gods are kind, they will let you use them in the afterlife. As was my custom every evening, I duly recorded the day's events in detail on papyrus scrolls, another innovation of mine. And it was now some two months since my Lord Intef had removed my manhood, yet still I felt the pang of passion for my mistress Lostris. I had presented Pharaoh with no less than 120 suitable maidens, alas, none that met his royal requirements. Taita. Mistress. I couldn't sleep thinking of tomorrow. You only need to have sent word and I would have come to you and sung you to sleep with your favorite lullaby. No. I want to glimpse the bow that you made for Lord Tannis. Is that it? Yes, my lady. Mighty archer's bow. Triple the force and range of any weapon currently in use by the army. The court is buzzing with rumors that he has returned from his campaigns in the north. I must see him. You promised. Mistress, I will keep my promise, as arranged. Tomorrow, I have an appointment with Lord Tanners to show him the Lenata. If he is as striking as people say. He is as they describe. This was the moment that for years I had known was coming, and which I dreaded more than the day of my own death. What is this strange beast? I think it's called a horse. It's captured from our enemies in the far north. It's faster than an ostrich. It can outrun any man. And in wartime, it's used to pull their chariots. Tanus who even before he was 20 was already a commander in the Pharaoh's elite blue crocodile division. But he is so beautiful. I thought you might like him. My worst fears confirmed in a single moment. I could tell by the look in her eyes that this vision, this man, my friend Tanis, would be her object of love for the rest of her life. You are my sunlight. My days are dark without you. You are the Nile of my heart. What does I love feed my soul? I shall love you through this and all the worlds to come. No one shall come between us. Nothing shall part us. We, we are, are one. one. Forever. I feel compelled to mention that I had taken no part in the conception of this celebration. If I had, the result might not have been in such bad taste. Instead, it was entirely the work of the priests of Osiris, who saw fit to conceal their lack of ideas behind a dazzle of treasure. <laughs> 